Hey, how's it going? Um, it's Hector Acuna here. I'm down in my studio. I'm working on preparing a uh, group of small panels for egg tempera painting. I'm actually teaching a workshop, a one day, like half a day workshop up in um, Kimberly, Wisconsin at the Richeson School of Art and Gallery. Um, I wanted to just quickly show you guys this process and what I've been doing over the past year um, for making my own panels for egg tempera painting. Let's take a look. So I like to work on birch half inch plywood um, as my support for egg tempera painting. And this is a four inch by six inch panel that I've already sanded. Um, I initially kind of beveled the edges so you can see there's a little bit of a round over on this top side of the panel and then the corners have also been sanded down a little bit too and all sides have been um, really lightly sanded with 220 grit sandpaper so it has a very smooth finish but I've used birch plywood and I've also tried sandy plywood which are both available at Home Depot but Birch plywood tends to be a lot more stable as a support for this type of ground that I'll be showing you. Um, the grain of the wood is really what makes a big difference. So the sandy plywood, unlike the birch, has much more of a noticeable and deeper grain in the wood pattern. So that's why birch plywood is a lot safer um, and more stable as a support to you. So I've got a stack of these that I just cut down today. Um, these will be for students during the workshop. Um, any leftover ones will be future studio egg tempera paintings. Um, I was just standing here before I started recording, uh, mixing my Easy Gesso, which is a product sold by Rublev Colors, as you can see. Um, I purchased this from naturalpigments.com. They also sell paint and other painting materials and tools. It's a really great company. Um, this is not a product placement sponsored kind of video. I purchased this with my own money. So far, I've really been enjoying it as a surface for egg tempera painting. And it's really easy to use. I've never actually tried the traditional process of sizing canvases or wooden supports with melted rabbit skin glue or RSG as you might come across online. It just sounds like a hassle. I've read articles that say it's not quite as archival um, as you know contemporary acrylic polymer based sizing mediums. But anyway, for egg tempera you really need an absorbent um, gesso, a traditional gesso and this was the missing piece for me um, when I wanted to start using egg tempera in my studio practice. Um, I didn't really have a surface or I wasn't trained on how to prepare surfaces. So just through trial and error, I've come across this process that's been working well. So what you have to do is mix equal parts by volume of the Easy Gesso, which is a mixture of very fine um, rabbit skin glue and chalk or uh, calcium carbonate. So those are the two ingredients that are in this um, product and you mix them with warm water, uh, which is the step that I'm currently just about finished with. So you can see it has a bit of a soupy, almost cream-like consistency. Um, I'm hoping that I use the right amount of water um, just because of the size of this container. It was a little difficult to get a perfect 50-50 um, or one-to-one -one ratio of both ingredients. So once that is mixed, then you have to let it sit for two hours and it will start to congeal and create um, more of a gel consistency. And um, after two hours, then what you can do is um, place the container, so that's step number three, place the container in a pot full of hot tap water and the gesso will liquefy, which can then be brushed on. And you want to apply thin coats to your support wall. The gesso is still warm. Allow each coat to touch dry um, before applying the next coat. And then this is recommending at least four coats to produce the best surface for painting. And then if you want to smooth out that surface at the end, you can sand it with 360 or finer grit sandpaper. So 
Um, that's, the, that's the process I've taken in the past. And I've made probably 10 egg tempera paintings. Um, I say that most of them are really small. So, you know, don't picture large scale, really time intensive paintings. Um, I would like to start doing some bigger egg tempera paintings, but uh, most of them have been around this size or smaller. So it's a new medium for me, but I was just in the middle of this process. And since I'll be teaching a workshop on this, I thought this video would be really useful just to show you what this process looks like for preparing your own panels. So, so we'll be back in two hours to see what this looks like. Okay, so it's been about two, actually almost two and a half hours. You can see that the texture now is a bit more solid. It's got a little bit of a uh, gelatin, kind of jello consistency now. I have some hot water that I just heated up here on the stove. So the next step is to uh, transfer this to my work area, uh, probably let it cool off for a minute or two. Put it on a hot pad and then i'll place this jar into the hot water and let the glue um, start to melt again in this mixture and it'll be a lot smoother and i can start to brush it on my panels You see that it's starting to break up now. It's starting to liquefy again. So I'm gonna keep mixing this until it's more of an even consistency, but most of it has already started to liquefy, which is good. Um, I did wanna say on the package, it says to use hot ta uh, tap water. So if you're doing this, make sure you're not using boiling water. I think that that might be too hot. Um, so before I placed the jar into the pot here, I let the, um, I let the pot sit on the table for a few minutes and, um, try to let it cool off a little bit before actually placing the jar inside the water. So, all right, it's looking, looking pretty good. I wasn't sure quantity wise if I would have enough for all 12 of my panels, but um, it's gonna be pretty thin. So I might be able to run downstairs and grab my other four panels and do all 12 tonight, we'll see. Um, I'm starting with eight. So I've got my eight four by six panels here ready to go. Uh, I'll try to do the fronts and the sides. The goal is to get four layers on all of them uh, over the next, you know, one to two hours. This is the brush that I plan to use. It's a synthetic flat. Um, the hairs are fairly thin, um, so this should give me a nice smooth uh, surface. You definitely don't want to use bristle brushes. Um, hopefully this little clump right here won't be a problem, but um, using a softer brush like this is going to definitely help. So you can see how thin, how thin this is. I'm just going to start brushing it on like this. Might be a little hard to see. My lighting in here isn't, isn't great, but um, like the package said, you want to start with a thin layer first. I think building up the material with very, very thin layers um, is the way to go because if you start with a really clumpy, thick layer, it's not going to adhere as well to the surface. So now I'll just go through and layer all of them like this one at a time all 
So here we have um, one of the panels almost fully dry after that first thin layer of the gesso um, side or next to a unprimed panel. So you can really see the difference that one layer already is making. Um, but again, now what I'm going to do is once this is pretty much dry all the way, or it's actually probably dry enough now to start putting on that next layer, I'm just going to start cycling through all of these other panels and maybe I'll grab a couple extra ones to prime. Um, and then something else is to make sure that you're priming the sides of your panel as well. So you can also see um, the difference that that first layer is making on the sides of the panel as well. So what I like to do is do the top first, go through all the panels doing the top, and then on the second time around, I'll just go around and paint the sides, and then go through all of them and paint the sides, and then come back and do the front again and just keep cycling that way. So um, yeah, so far so good. I also did notice that as you're going through the bottom of the jar, even if the water is still relatively hot or warm, will start to... Um, kind of gel up again or start to um, thicken on the bottom. So occasionally you're going to want to take a stirring stick or something and just bring up whatever's sticking on the bottom of the jar to make sure that everything is as uh, cohesively mixed as possible. So a couple things I noticed there. So here we have our finished panels. They haven't been sanded yet, but I wanted to show you again a side-by-side -side comparison of what they looked like before I started priming them versus now. Um, so you can see there's a really thick layer of the gesso. You can almost see some of the plywood on the side, uh, but on top, it, it's really impossible to see any of the wood grain anymore, which is, which is what you want, right? You wanna make sure that you're not going to sand through the gesso to the wood so you want to build up enough layers so that there's a, um, a thick enough amount of gesso to have your painting on. Um, so the next step is going to be to sand this with uh, probably like 400 grit sandpaper. I have some that's really, really fine. So I'm going to start with that and just see if I can level out some of those little brush strokes there on the surface. Um, I also wanted to mention that this is after, I think six or seven layers and every layer was really thin but after the fourth layer it starts to build up a pretty decent amount of opacity um, and then I was just trying to get enough of a thickness around the outside um, I was really just trying to build up enough gesso around the outside of the panel that way when I sand it I don't just sand right down to the wood um, and then I also wanted to mention to make sure that you wash out your brush and um, you wash out the jar as soon as you're done. And I almost used all of the gesso on the 10 panels that I primed last night. So um, just to give you a sense of how much to mix, the amount that I showed you in the jar that I had, which was probably close to two inches, uh, maybe a little bit more than two inches of gesso was enough for 10 of these four by six inch panels. And most of them had seven layers on the top with about five or six layers around the sides. So just to give you a sense of how much primer that was. Um, a couple of them only had six layers on the top, maybe four or five, but anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sand this and then show you what they look like at the final, at the final uh, stage. Okay, I'm out in the garage right now, starting to sand all of the panels. Um, and I wanted to show you before I got through all of them, what the difference looks like in the surface between panels that are not sanded yet. Here are some that are yet to be sanded. You can see there's a little bit of uh, roughness to the surface. You can see the brush strokes from the brush that I was using. Towards the end of the priming or gessoing process, the gesso was getting a little bit thicker. Um, there was less water at the bottom of the jar, so it was going on like a little bit more of a paste, which is why you can see some of the ridges in the brush strokes. Now, when we look at a panel that has already been sanded, this is one that had a similar surface quality to these two. Uh, now, after sanding with 400 grit sandpaper, we cannot see any of those brush strokes anymore. It's quite smooth. Um, it's a very soft surface. There are a few moments where we can see little, almost like engraved 
um, areas of the gesso. That's not because it's thin. Um, it's just because of the layering of gesso on the outer edge of the panel. The brush that I was using would ride along the edge of the panels all the way along the surface of the perimeter and created a, a very subtle um, higher lip or edge around the outside. And that's where we see these little tiny marks. So if you want to avoid that, you can either try to have more layers on the top than on the sides, um, or try to be a bit more careful when you're gessoing the outer edges of the panel. But uh, I just wanted to show you guys what they look like at the very last stage. And I am using 400 grit sandpaper here. So it's a very fine sandpaper. Um, that's what I would recommend. That way you're not rubbing through the gesso to the wood. It's really um, super smooth and very, and very fine. So that's the end of the video. I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.